Hi, and welcome to the Roland Cloud Academy. I am Nutrix, and together we will dive deep inside making sounds with the Juno 106 model expansions for Xenology Pro. If you don't have Xenology Pro, or you don't know how to use it, don't know how to find it, if you don't know how to use the Roland Cloud Manager, please visit the Roland Cloud Academy YouTube channel to get all the information. Remember that a model expansion is an expansion for Xenology Pro. So you need to have Xenology Pro or a compatible hardware device that supports the model expansion, like the Jupyter XM, for example. Let's actually go in and see what we can do with a Juno 106. When you open your Xenology Pro, you get something like this. Now you click on the name of the sound. You verify that you're in all banks, so you're not listed only in the bank that you selected. So basically, because this is a filter, and you're gonna filter only the Juno 106 sounds. So I have only the Juno 106 sounds. Now remember that the one that are written in capital letters are the original factory presets from the original Juno 106. And so what we'll do, uh, let's say we take what they call the init sound. Let's double click on this one and go edit. So we have this window of editing to work with. Now, let's go through this first and then we'll do some sound with that. So the first part I want you to look at is this section on the top right here, where they show you the internal schematics of the synthesizer. It means that the LFO, the single LFO, can be sent to the DCO, so it's gonna change the pitch or the shape of it. You're gonna be able, with the VCO, if you go look here, the LFO can control the DCO by controlling the pulse width modulation. That's what you have here if you select a square wave and it can come from the LFO, or you can just bring the LFO here and it's gonna change the pitch of it. Okay, what else we have? It also can be sent to the I-pass filter. You also have the VCF. Envelope can control the VCF and envelope can controls the VCA. And then you can have the multi-effects. So the same envelope can be assigned to the VCA here when you select envelope here, or it can be assigned to the VCF here with a quantity and a depth amount here. Okay, and you have your LFO here and you have the keyboard control. So let's go through that to understand each of these sections. Well, the DCO is the one we hear. Let's bring that down. We have a choice of the two shapes, the sawtooth, and you have a square wave that has a pulse width modulation function. The pulse width, if you put it at man, which is manual, you can, you can basically change the shape of it. It becomes from a square to an impulse. That's why it's a pulse width modulation. If you assign the LFO to that, it's a pretty cool way to have some movement. Well, that's really fast. Okay, let's go back to the LFO then and bring the rate down. Oh no, that's the LFO for the DCO, for the pitch. Let's bring that down. This is where you have the LFO for the pulse width modulation. So. so that movement is always, if you want it to be That's really a cool. I always like the pulse width modulation. It just gives movement to the sound. Now what's cool about the DCO here is you can have the square wave and the sawtooth at the same time. You have these two sounds. If I take off the square wave, I only have the sawtooth right now. If I have the square wave, the two together, well, of course it's bigger because they're in tune. So that's a little bit different than Another type of synthesizer where you, you would have two oscillators and two sounds. In this case, you get two sounds, but they're the same oscillator, so you cannot detune them one from the other. Unison mode. And then there are, you, you have like six of them playing at the same time, and they're a little slightly detuned. And then you have another oscillator if you want, which is the sub oscillator. So this one is even turn off the this one is like an octave lower 
but it gives a very, you know, aggressive tone. Which is one of the cool thing about this. You also have the range. So this is basically the pitch. Low, 16, 8. This is just by default, this sound is just like massive. It's really cool. <laughs> like this. Then you have the noise. Some people go, why do I want a noise? Well, it's it's another type of sound. It could be useful in percussive sounds to create these this kind of inharmonics in a like a snare, a hi-hat. Uh, it could be also be part of these percussive sounds like bells. There's some inharmonics that are kind of more percussive. So the noise could be a cool thing to have. Now, by default, it's just very loud. But if you use it, when you also use the filter, it becomes interesting. The I-pass filter is basically, you're going to cut the lows. It's going to let the high frequency pass. It's a high-pass filter. So, see here? I don't have the sub anymore. It's almost all cut. And this is more kind of a nasal sound. This is interesting if you want to have your sound really cut through a mix where there's a lot of bass already happening and you don't want this sound to fight with the bass. Remember that good sounds, when you play them alone, they're just massive. You go, oh, they're really good. When you put them in a mix, you're going to have to cut it. You're going to have to EQ it and to, to give it just one space. If not, it means that in your song, it's going to be muddy uh, often in the mix or you have less sounds you know you have this sound that takes almost everything when you know that this is going to be let's say a lead and you have a bass so you want it to have less bass of course you can just bring the sub down but even up in this case it's part of the timber but there's still less bass to fight with the other bassy sound and then no eye pass everything passes through now we have the VCF. It's a voltage controlled filter emulation. You have three different types of model. There's the Roland sound, the Roland filter, that's the M and the S. These are two other type of emulation of the way the filter could react. I'll let you play with them, but let's stay with the Roland model. So this one is a 24 dB per octave or a four pole. So it means that it cuts rapidly and that when you cut it, the Resonance is also very obvious. Self oscillating. Now keep in mind that when I play right now, if I put the keyboard at zero, you hear that the, the resonance doesn't move. It's always the same pitch. If you bring the keyboard up, you hear the, the very high pitched resonance move because now the frequency of the VCF is controlled by where the keyboard notes are played. So it's got, it's in a key follow mode. So it's going to follow the keys. It goes up the keys. I could even bring that down if I'm not mistaken. Wait. And bring that. I'm not, I don't have a DCO anymore. I only have the resonance. Let's bring the resonance down here. So I have that sound. You see now with the VCF, this noise thing gives more. It's not too high. You still have that kind of a, kind of noisy type of sound, but still have a. It's not that nice presence of kind of a nasty little synthesizer playing. You have the envelope here, which is this shape here. So let's say we want to have something that has some attack, a lower decay, and some release. Maybe the decay is too long. Let's have a shorter decay. If you find that it opens too high, too, too open, you can bring down the amount of envelope movement. This is the, the, the amount of movement here. If you put it at the maximum, it's going to open up to the top. And if you want the bottom here of the movement, so the lowest value to be 
close, you need to bring, it's actually the, the cutoff point. So the envelope here in the filter mode starts from here, the value of where the frequency is, and the top value at the top here is how much you actually decided to move this. So if you put it to the maximum and you put the frequency to zero, you're really gonna go from zero to maximum opening and have this movement. So you, you hear it goes up and then it goes down to lower than half the value if you want it. Let's put it longer. You're gonna hear the full movement. So well, I don't want this to be as high because I don't want it to be as clear. Well, then you bring this down here. It doesn't open as much now, and but you don't want it to be closed as much because now it's almost gone. Well, I'm going to bring up the frequency. So now. So this movement is more like a pad. But it, it starts from this value here, and it goes only a little bit more than half the movement. So this movement is just a section of the frequencies moving. I want it to be faster again. And we have the same movement control with the envelope of the volume. Turn it off, click gate instead. It means that the, the, the VCA is just opened and close. There's no value of changes. It's just like maximum and nothing. But it means that there's no release. If I release my key, because there's nothing, it's just on and off. So, which is okay. That's how it works. So it means that if you want to have a release, you're going to need to have envelope selected on the VCA here. No, no release. There's something interesting here. You can actually have the envelope inversed. So you go, well, I don't hear that much. Well, actually what happens now, it takes the movement in the other way. Let's actually go back to this thing here. We had this earlier. So it meant that it, it, it went from this to open it. Now, if you take the other way, it takes this and close it. So it's already too low. So it's just gonna sound closed. Turn this. If I open it up to the maximum now, it starts from maximum and close it. Because it's the movement in the other way. So it closes and then comes back here. So this is a really cool sound. One thing we still have here is an LFO. I don't want it to happen while this is happening, while the attack and decay. I only want to appear when we get into the sustain stage. So I'm going to use the delay time to have it wait. And start the movement after. See if I want it to be even, let's say I want it to be faster, so it's, I mean, it's going to be so we hear. You hear it appears right here. I put a zero delay time. It moves right away. Uh, especially if I put it to the max. Here, start from the beginning, you hear. It vibrates right away. But if, if I put delay time, start after. More delay. Starts here. here. So this is interesting. I don't want it that speed and that amount, but now it starts to move. But it can also be useful for some type of. Vibrato opens up only after you're at the sustain stage. Last part, which is a cool one, is having the chorus. You have different modes. These three modes here are the modes from the 106, and you have a 
Some people love this because it's kind of the signature of the original 106. The chorus had a noise, so now you can have this because they modeled the noise. Or if you don't want it, you turn it off. And there's a balance where you hear more of the effects or more of the dry sound. So you can actually have the two. You can control that part between the two. So this is how you would do it. This is how you would actually select a different type of chorus. Let's actually do a bass sound. No attack, fast bass, no noise, less bass. It's going to be faster. Envelope. This is pretty cool. This is how you would do it here. Thank you for watching. Put your comments below.